the 1990s ushered in a period of rising popularity and rate regulation. But within two short years, cable would learn a hard lesson. What Congress giveth, Congress taketh away. As cable rates rose and customer complaints mounted about service, a stew of events and personalities put cable in the sights of some powerful enemies in Washington, D.C. The Cable Communications Act of 1992 returned the industry to severe forms of rate and performance regulation, drying up cash flow growth and almost single-handedly choking off capital spending. The 1994 launch of DirecTV ignited a new and unprecedented era of competition to the cable industry as the satellite TV category exploded onto the scene. Cable operators watched in alarm as once loyal customers abandoned cable for the promises of a channel-rich satellite TV offering. By the mid-1990s, cable operators were getting serious about placing high-capacity fiber deep into their networks. The thing that I'm the proudest about, because I think it's made the most difference, is, uh, is this use of fiber to transform cable systems from uh, big chains of, of amplifiers delivering a few dozen channels of video into a, a very powerful uh, communications medium that's capable of supporting a number of networks simultaneously, a broadcast analog video network, a broadcast digital video network, a routed video network for, on, for video on demand and interactive video services, and a, a big IP network for internet services. Cable technology companies and operators alike began to transform the traditional analog format of video signals into the new language of digital. The conversion introduced new possibilities and ignited a renaissance of cable programming development. The most major advance in technology, certainly out of those that we've been dealing with, uh, has been the move to digital television. It's been the tool that's enabled not just on demand, but high definition internet television, mm -hmm. internet video, uh, many production techniques so that you can produce television using a small device. Uh, being able to digitally compress signals, uh, I, I think has changed television forever. Amid the flurry of technological innovation reviving the cable industry in the 1990s was a signature product that would transform the industry and lift it from its re-regulation doldrums. It was called the Internet. Along came uh, somebody from Silicon Valley one day came to visit us and said, gee, you know, with this plant you're building, you guys could offer high-speed access to the Internet. And we all looked at each other and said, well, what's the Internet? <laughs> Time Warner Cable and other MSOs would know the answer to that question very soon. In a variety of markets, they were beginning to introduce new cable modem technologies and networking approaches that would transform the Internet from a slow-moving medium of words and still pictures to a broadband multimedia marvel. In less than two years, cable-delivered Internet service would go from the drawing board to the living room. The industry rallied around two important instigators. The first was a now historic set of technology specifications describing how internet over cable service would work. Abbreviated as DOCSIS, the specifications published by Cable Labs in 1996 gave the industry a leg up on other internet delivery rivals and produced a product line that literally took America by storm. The second was a consortium called the At Home Network, which began as a way to link individual cable networks into a national high-speed backbone and morphed into an aggregator of content intended to draw consumers into a high-speed internet life. The most memorable quotation of the day came from an early customer in Northern California. If you want my cable modem, the customer declared, you'll have to pry it from my cold, dead fingers. So I think broadband made us better. Uh, it made us tighten up the plant, make it operate better, and obviously it created a whole new revenue stream. The Telecommunications Act of 1996 liberated cable in many ways, allowing the industry to compete not only in high-speed internet delivery, but in the traditional telephone business too. As if to signify a new growth era for cable, some of America's largest telephone and telecom companies began making investments in the industry. The resources that had supported a revolution in the internet and in digital television could be traced back to the same foundation that supported cable television in its earliest years, 
miles of two-way fiber, cable, and associated equipment, and the wherewithal to have strung it up in the first place. Do you believe in the superhighway? Information superhighway, Al Gore information superhighway. And everybody says, absolutely, I believe in information superhighway. I said, well, we make concrete. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's as simple as it gets. We make the off-ramp, we make the concrete, because you can't have it. You can't have this, this future without first doing the basics.